you have done extensive research on the sense of smell and taste in the elderly. What happens to our sense of smell and taste when we age? Several scientists have reported that aging is accompanied by a decline in olfaction and taste perception. However, elderly people are not an homogeneous group. While some elderly people will experiment in a decline in their ability to perceive the smell and the taste of a food, for instance, other people, other elderly people, will only experiment a small or even no decline. Recently you have done a study with elderly people to see how their sense of smell and taste decline. What is the percentage? How many people can retain a good sense of smell and taste? A few years ago, we ran a big survey in France with around six, 600 uh, participants. And we asked the people to, to uh, run several chemosensory tests to assess their ability to perceive odor and taste. The results show that uh, about 45% of the elderly par participants has, uh, have a quite normal sense of smell. Uh, with uh, no or a very small decline and a normal sense of taste. However, about 25% of the elderly people experiment a decline in olfactory capacity. They were uh, less uh, performant to smell the odors than younger uh, counterparts. And 25% uh, experiment a decline in the ability to perceive taste, to perceive salt uh, in, the, in the mouth. But uh, these people have still a normal sense of smell. In this study you excluded people with severe cognitive deficits. What do we actually know about the sense of smell and taste in people who suffer from Alzheimer's disease? In the survey, we exclude people with a, with a cognitive disorder because the survey uh, in, includes a lot of verbal questionnaire, and so we need to have uh, people who are able to answer questions. In the, in the experiment uh, with the seasoning and the table dressing, we did not select uh, people regarding uh, their cognitive level because we measure food intake. So never mind whether people were able to report verbal answer or not. Chemosensory disorder on dementia is a crucial point, in fact, because uh, when, you, when you have Alzheimer's disease, for instance, it is, always, it is often associated with smell impairment. And in fact, there were some scientific works to design an olfactory test as a first screening tool to uh, diagnose Alzheimer because the sense of smell declined decline very early in the context of the, of the pathology. However, I ran an experiment with Alzheimer patient where we designed an olfactory test that was really based on the, on the facial expression of the participant. We just make them smell some, some um, bottles and look at uh, whether they express something or not. And in fact, when they smell something, they often have some inspiration or disgusting uh, reaction. And we observe that almost uh, um, half of the participants were with Alzheimer were still able to react to the odor. But the, the Olfactory tests often request a verbal answer, and they are not able to produce a verbal answer. Do actually the elderly who lose their sense of smell or taste notice it? Do they suffer from it? Well, it depends. In fact, uh, some elderly people will uh, report uh, having some trouble to perceive the, sense, the taste and the odor of a food. Uh, but uh, when you test them with actual odor, they did not uh, display any uh, decline. They just display normal performance. However, other elderly people did not complain, say, oh no, it's okay, I perceive the sense of smell as well as when I was 40, 
but in fact, with the actual orders, they display a decline in olfactory perception. So some people are aware of a decline, others are not aware, and some people are aware, but it's false, in fact. Is there anything one can do to prevent a decline? Do some special cooking or training, stay healthy? Staying healthy, probably, <laughs> I would bet. Anyway, what is known is that taking some drugs or being exposed to polluant or having some disease such as dementia, dementia disease may uh, lead to a decline in olfactory perception. We cannot prevent ourselves, or it's difficult to prevent ourselves of taking drug or uh, having a disease when we are old, but maybe be cautious with polluant. And also, some studies show that maybe uh, smell some odor, train uh, ourselves with all the odor can maintain uh, the ability to perceive odors, but there are still to um, not enough scientific proof to be sure of that. What are the consequences of a weak sense of smell and taste? This is an interesting question. Literature on authors often have often written that um, when you lose the sense of smell and the sense of taste, you may also experiment a decline, or it may lead to a decline in appetite and food intake. However, up to now, there is no very um, deep scientific proof that this is true. I would, to be honest, I don't know what is at this moment the real impact of smell decline on food intake. Some argue that you experience less pleasure when you are cooking, and this is probably true, but the, the impact on food intake and food choice is not so clear. In one study, you tested different ways to increase the appetite of nursing home residents. How did you do that and uh, what were the results? In this study, we ran two trials. In the first trial, we compare a situation in which the table, uh, the context of the meal was a standard context in a nursing home and a second uh, condition where we improve the, the environment with a nice furniture, nice uh, cutterly flowers on the table. In a, in a second trial, we compare a control uh, situation versus an experimental situation where, where we provided the residents of the nursing homes with seasonings. So we put lemon, garlic, and uh, um, butter, ketchup, and so on. Uh, on, the, on the table, on participants were free to, to season their food uh, and they, they, in fact they exchanged some recipes and they used uh, the different seasoning quite a while. When the results show that in both conditions, uh, table improvement and seasonings, meal enjoyment increase in the nursing home. However, only the seasoning condition did have an impact on uh, food intake. So it means that it's not enough to have a nice table, but it's important to make the elderly people able to tailor their food to their own taste. To evaluate their food products, companies traditionally rely on consumer tests of people under the age of 60. Do you see a need for more specific testing of older people? Yes, for sure. Yes, because when you, when you get older, your sense of, of smell can change, your sense of taste can also change, but also your oral ability, your capacity to choose the food, your salivary function, and so on. So uh, I would say that an answer of a young people uh, will not be the same as, an, as the answer of an older people. And for sure, I will recommend when you are designing food for, an older, for older people to run consumer testing with older people. However, it's often a challenge. When, when uh, older people are not 
too old, it's still okay to, um, when they are healthy, when they are autonomous, they are still living at home. I mean, it's okay to run a consumer test with them. And we do that in our lab quite uh, easily and often. However, when you want to target a frail nursing home population, it's much more difficult because these, peop these people often experience a de cognitive decline, are very fa fatigable, so you have to plan very short consumer testing and so on. So it's obviously cost costly. But I think it's very important to really target the elderly population and design the food not only for them, but also with them. Would it be a good idea for the industry to develop foods for the special chemosensory needs of the elderly? During the studies or during the, the different people that I can meet, uh, I, sometime I, I heard, okay, elderly people are not able to perceive the, the, the smell or the taste of the food, so maybe we should not really care about that but i think it's it's wrong it's a really wrong idea it's still very important and even more important for this population to provide them with appealing and uh, palatable foods uh, not only on flavor but also on visual and textural aspect in fact it's very important that eating remains a pleasure uh, I remember uh, old uh, men, uh, old man, sorry, who, who told me, oh, eating, eating, you know, it's maybe the last pleasure of our life. The elderly population is a very, very big market in the context of an aging population. This is what, it is, this is what we call the silver economy. So now it's very important uh, to to, um, for the industry, it's very important to develop a range of products targeting this population. But I would say that at the moment, industry mainly focuses on healthy, uh, autonomous, uh, elderly people. Uh, they develop some functional food to prevent disease, to, to, uh, to get older and better health, and so on. That's very good. But we should not forget uh, to target frail and very old elderly people, uh, elderly people who are in nursing home, in hospital, who are not able to cook uh, as uh, they were used to, to do before and so on. So I think uh, now we really have to keep in mind this population, not only the healthy elderly. What research study right now are you involved with and what are your plans for the future? There is still a lot to do and in fact after um, going through chemosensory ability, olfactor, olfaction and test uh, perception, now I am working on oral disability, the impact of, uh, of uh, chewing efficiency, of uh, salivary uh, change, of uh, losing uh, tooth and so on. What is the impact on uh, eating pleasure, on the comfort of eating, on uh, what are the co recommendations that we can provide to industry, to food industry, to develop a um, range of products that's really sweet to the, the elderly oral constraints. So this is now my area of work. Claire, thank you very much for the interview.